All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the podcast. Got my good friend Bruce Cardenas here, my co host Squints, and myself, Brian. Thank you for coming, Bruce. Welcome, Bruce. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I really enjoyed, before we got on camera, knowing more about you. Yeah. And obviously, I've known Brian for quite a while. Yeah. So it's pretty cool to be here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we just had some of your, uh, the, the legend. There you go. Hope yeah, I had a little Pop Tart that was amazing. Yeah. Good luck. Every- Breakfast of Champions. Everyone, if you grew up anywhere in America, you had a pop tart at some point. Yeah. Like now imagine a healthy version of that. Pretty no, cool. it's great, and it's yeah. good because there's not a lot of. Uh, I liked the cookies that came from the the Lenny's brand because it was just something different when you're talking about a protein or a health type of, of for supplement. Sure. It's a healthier than kind of product. You know, it's got some protein, which obviously people are looking for something other than just pure sugar and yeah flour. So and then you know the bars they can be a little uh, chalky, dry. Yeah, you just sure. you get over Even them. You the know, Larry and Lenny's cookies taste they weren't chemically. great yeah. yeah i mean they're i don't i don't say anything bad about anyone but no they did they did they had a purpose right yeah they did and, and they've done well but quest we that's where we really made it happen because i think it was taste and texture that really put us on the map yeah with the protein bars yeah it was awesome um you want to give us a little backstory about yourself wow where do i start um yeah just <laughs> a, a middle class kid from uh, high bridge new jersey and I, at the time i thought new jersey was the entire country if you can imagine that when you grow up someplace right you think this is it there's nowhere else and i always had a dream of being a police officer and i was always that cop groupie there was a seven person seven man department there was no women and i did ride alongs and i remember i graduated high school and i did sports and i was a, you know on all the varsity stuff but I had this passion about being a cop. And I remember one day I said to the chief, hey, uh, you know, I'm graduate high school now. Do I need to go to college? I want to, I want to join a department. He said, and in his own very kind way, Bruce, you're, you're young, you're dumb, and you're immature. But in a very nice way, right? But that's how I interpret it. But if you go in the Marine Corps, I'll hire you when you get out. I said, wow, that's all I need to do. So I grabbed my buddy, Bob Lewinsky. <laughs> and Lewandowski, I mean, I probably, and, uh, and I said, hey, we're, we're going to the Marine Corps. Went down to the recruitment depot. <laughs> Got the testing done, and months later, I was in Paris Island. Wow. And I realized there's a big world out there besides New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long ways from home. Long ways from home, scary, but I grew up in 12 weeks. You grow up, you know. We, we talked about the SEAL team training, different training. You, it's a wake-up call to go from, you know. How long is official Marine well, training? Well, boot camp is actually 12 weeks. So That's three months, but I went from, you know, being a slouchy kid to everyone is yes, sir, no, sir. And, yeah. Uh, a lot of discipline, a lot of mental gymnastics, but... I always tell people this, I recommend them, not, not the Marine Corps, but in general, the military, if you have nowhere you're going in life, you're not sure what you're going to do. I got my college degree in the Marine Corps. I took advantage of it. One of my bosses said, listen, you're either going to work out, you're going to you're gonna fall into several different categories. So I worked out and I went to school at night yeah. when I was available. And it was like, it was like a Pepperdine, so you could work remotely. And it was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of great programs and a lot of skill sets that come from, from service. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of, a lot of family members that are in that are in the service. My uncle, my mom's brother was, uh, he just retired, he's uh, Colonel, Colonel Powers. Um, he was a full bird Colonel. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, specializing in, uh, you know, analytics and war games. He's seen some pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I ended up reporting directly to a full board Colonel because I, ended up, I was on a security detail for the General of the Marine Corps, but uh, Colonel was my boss, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's an interesting, uh, I, I mean, I wish that he could, you know, now that he's out, maybe he can sit down. I'd love to just like pick his brain of like such a decorated career, you right? know? He'd be yeah, a great he's guest. a really cool guy. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a good guest to have on. And then my younger brother, Steven, he's a, he's a Black Hawk pilot. Really? He's in the Army as well. The Army, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he just got moved from, uh, he was at Fort Knox, and now he's back out here in California where he's from, so that's good. But he's the, he's the lead instructor for all instructors and Black Hawk pilots, so... He trains the instructor, so pretty cool gig. That's amazing. Well, yeah, and he's a kid that he wanted. He comes from a family. Uh, both his stepdad and his mother were were police officers. His uh, my stepdad, his his biological father was in a uh, police officer as well, um, and uh, he always wanted to be a pilot. He always oh. wanted to be a Black Hawk pilot, and eventually the kid. That's incredible. He did it. Yeah, now he's one That's of the a best. That's a dream. That's a very limited number of people that can qualify for those kind of jobs after all the testing and the degrees and yeah totally and uh he just he told us when he was young he was like i'm gonna fly blackhawks and That's i was like cool. and he's doing it it's pretty wow. cool yeah so I, I definitely feel like um yeah if somebody doesn't have direction the service is a good place yeah for them. you get a free free degree yeah a college degree so yeah there's so, a lot of benefits yeah, to it sorry. how's the transition from the marine corps to lapd so 
it was always a dream and what happened was the Marine Corps exposed me to traveling the world and like I said I was in a security detail and I ended up in Camp Pendleton down in San Diego up north of San Diego for a powerlifting event at the time when I was competing and I remember there was a career day on base I saw these big signs hiring and there was like companies like IBM and trucking companies and and some law enforcement companies and and I was like wow like you could make I think at the time the pay was starting at fifty thousand dollars and mm -hmm. beautiful weather and full benefits i'm like i think i'm gonna stay in california instead because i was gonna go back to new jersey and try and become a state trooper and it just happened i started processing and that was before crazy i'm dating myself there was no online you would met they'd mail yeah. you an application or you go pick it up fill it out you know by by hand and mail it in and i started the process with the chp the lapd the sheriff's department uh, san diego anywhere and i heard from lapd first and and that was it. it took about a year to process mm -hmm. and while i was processing i was doing miscellaneous jobs i was selling cars i was the number one car salesman at the dealership for seven months wow the matter of fact the dealer didn't he didn't want to let me go he's like you sure you want to be a cop you can make like a couple hundred thousand dollars a year and at the time that was huge it's money huge right huge money yeah but it was a patch and play so yeah i went in lapd joined the academy and and i think the marine corps obviously conditioned me for that because every time you step into those kind of endeavors you're like shit, this is gonna be hard oh my god and I was running at night and I realized, okay, the Marine Corps really conditioned me because I was mentally prepared. It wasn't, it wasn't the same level of stress as I thought, you know, it was going to be. So yeah, I started that career and it was, it was like a dream come true. I did some amazing things. I had opportunities to work some cool events and details and had a couple of shootouts and worked robbery homicide. So I, I did a lot of diverse things. Worked, yeah. the chief's office, worked the chief's office during the OJ trial. So wow. I was out in front of the courthouse every day. How was that? That was interesting, you know? Yeah. That was more slash security slash a lot of PR questions. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it was a tough, uh, I remember watching it on TV as a kid. Um, yeah. It was, it was a big, uh, I mean, that might be the first reality television right? segment, so to speak, you know? Fortunately, there was a, you know, people lost their lives, but it definitely yeah. there was like a big, it was a big show. I remember my mom watching the trial every day on tv yeah. and like people actually tuned in it was a it was a big yeah, it was a big big national tv thing I yeah it was one of the earlier ones where people tuned in for those cases for oh, yeah. from start to finish that how long were you in the how long were you with lapd so i did i did 12 years full-time with lapd and I, I started earlier on i you know like i many cops you know that fifty thousand dollars wasn't as much money as i thought right so yeah. i started working moonlighting my security background kicked in so i met a retired beverly hills cop and started doing some security work and after doing that for a while, I was like, this isn't that hard. Like, I know how to do this business. Let me just get, I got my own license, got my own insurance. And I, I went to a couple of clients and say, hey, I have this business and I'm a relationship guy. Yeah. And a matter of fact, one of my clients who's the, you know, one of the owners of a company like Revlon and a holding company, I, he's been a client for 30 years now. Wow. So I just started doing that on my own and I've always stayed pretty niche, but it got pretty big. It got pretty big to the point where I couldn't be a cop at the same time. Yeah. I was, I was doing too much. I was traveling with celebrities and people like Mariah Carey and a lot of Sony artists. So I was, I was on the road, so I couldn't even, I couldn't even do my job. So I, I left that to do the security full time. Yeah, definitely a, a, a different, but you know, similar. Yeah, no, I love it. I'm, I've always been in the service industry and I just, I, it was, it was an enjoyable, I still do it. I mean, I still have clients that come in town. I take care, but not, not at the level I was. Yeah. How was it transitioning then from security to doing Quest and Legendary? So the crazy thing with that, so I was doing the security and my security company was always housed inside of a limo company. It was at the time it was called CLS Transportation, which was the largest private them. limousine. Yeah. My friend Charlie, we're, we still do business together. Yeah. I was always housed in there. So a lot of my clients came from him. And so I, I had my, I was executive vice president of his company. And then I had my own company for security. And just serendipitously, one day I was at the gym and I met Shannon who goes by Quest Creator at the gym. And she gave me a couple protein, you know, you kibitz with someone, you see them all the time at the gym. And she gave me a couple protein bars one day. And I remember I went back the next, next time I saw her and said, those bars were amazing. Taste, texture, because I grew up, you know, working out and the bars were not great then. And uh, it's almost a little bit of a blur because I still had my business, but they gave me bars. And I said, hey, if you have any extra bars, I'm, I'm doing this event. I was doing security at the Riviera Country Club for a celebrity uh, tennis tournament. Nice. And I said, if you want to get me some product, and she got me some product and I brought it to the event and I knew nothing really about marketing or how this all worked, but I figured, you know what? I know I need to get the product in people's hands and I need to get content for content for them. Now at the time I only had a Blackberry, but I saw a couple of people that had that cam video cameras and stuff. And I said, you know, I, one of my female friends was the publicist there. So I said, can you interview some people trying this on camera? I just figured it out as I yeah. was going. I've always been like, okay, how do I make this work? Got all this content. And then the event was over and people loved the product and I sent it to the owners and they're like, holy shit, like how, wait, where'd you, how'd you make that happen? 
And I got a little bit of a high from it. And then next thing you know, because I was doing the security on Extra when Mario Lopez was hosting at the Grove, I brought product there. And Mario, I remember one day, was giving it out on camera. Like, hey, I got Quest Bars wow. for everybody. It just kind of started happening. And then I sent some to Jessica Simpson, who was a client at the time. And it just started feeling really good. It was all of a sudden, wait, I got this protein bar company. And it's kind of cool. Like, the people I've always serviced in security, now I'm giving them protein bars. And over the course of nine months, I helped them build some relationships. And... I remember uh, Ron, the, the founder, Shannon's husband, took me to lunch and said, listen, we've pretty much been stealing from you for the last nine months. You're doing more for us than we've ever done for you, and we're not really sure why. Like, are you like a Russian spy? Are you working for another company? And, <laughs> and uh, they said, we're going to put you on the payroll starting Friday. And it was, a not, it, was, it was an okay amount. It wasn't going to change my life, but it then made me feel like, shit, now I'm really out. Like, my work ethic kicked in. Like, oh, my God, now they're paying me. Now i got to really produ produ uh, prove myself. So... It kind of just happened that I just phased out of the limo thing. I still had the passion for the security, but this was like, wow, this is a startup company. And things were just lining up, the relationships. And I started managing relationships with GNC and Vitamin Shop and all these you know, big companies. And, and while the sales guys were selling, no one really was interested in being out in the real world. And I like being out dealing with people. So I was on a plane. I was just telling someone the other day, 52 weeks out of year, I was at least somewhere 42 weekends a year at an event. And I got us involved with CrossFit and a bodybuilding community and all kinds, of, you know, all kinds of events. So it was a passion play. Yeah. I, but I always say this: I was probably the least qualified person to work in a nutrition company. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. I didn't go to school for food science. I didn't go for anything. I didn't go to school for marketing or PR. But I became like a PR expert and marketing expert just on. And I say that not not behind the scenes, not on a computer with search engine optimization stuff, but more marketing to people and having real relationships, yeah. authentic relationships. Yeah, out in the field. Um, yeah. I, it's cool how you touched on that excitement because I feel like that's like human drive in itself. And I try to, when people are a little lost in general, I try to tell them like, find something that, that like sparks your soul sparks, and yeah. gets you excited, you know? And like you said, you were, they were wondering why you were going so hard for them because yeah. you know, they're here you are providing all the content and you're doing that just out of the, the thrill of the, of the, the movement itself, you know, it really was. And, and, and I think I, you know, everyone has a why, right? But my, my why became pretty big. I think yeah. probably bigger than theirs. Yeah. I think, it, you know, there's three partners. They all have different versions of what they wanted to do, but I really felt I was changing people's lives and making a difference. And it really, it sounds kind of cheeky maybe, but it, it was true. No, that's what, that, you know? that's, that's what life's about. I think that we find our, you know, something that we're excited about. And sometimes it can be somebody else's, somebody else's vision to start. Yeah. And somebody else picks the ball up and yeah, takes it, it to it. the next level, you know? And uh, that's what I did. I ended up, you know, uh, we sold three years ago, like I said, for a billion dollars to Atkins, and I was one of the executives. And it's, you know, it's a pretty cool feeling. Yeah. You know? And you helped, you helped build that I was business. part of the team. I'm not an I person. Yeah. It was definitely a, a team effort yeah. in many ways, but I, I feel like I contributed to the success of it, you know? That's amazing. Congrats yeah. on that. Yeah. That's a big deal. Right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's very rare. I mean, for those kind of deals to come together. There's I love only... that, uh, you know, chance happenings, like, like, yeah. There's opportunity around at all times. We like to talk about this a lot, too, is that, you know, sometimes we get, we get blinders and we're going in a right. certain direction or we think we have a certain path and you know there's all types of life rafts around you at all times that like you know if you keep your eyes open something will come that is an, an opportunistic and maybe you know like you said outside of your realm of what you for sure you think is in front of you but uh change your life completely i tell people that all the time i mean it's like well you lucked out i go did i luck out i mean yes i met someone that was incredible but i had to run with that ball i mean she wasn't asked they weren't asking me to build these no. relationships i just said i'm going to do it that was an and interception. I, and I didn't do it on any idea because, as a matter of fact, the first time I visited their offices, they were in Compton. And when yeah. I pulled up, it was just like little shitty industrial park. And when I went inside, I was like, they're not going to be in business in six months. It was yeah. that like dire straight. Oh, they were, it was crappy little office. But I had something. So I always tell people, I just did what I did. I wanted to bring them value. And I say this when, when I speak to people. Bring value with no and have no expectation. Exactly. And and I tell people all the time, well, how do you find these opportunities? Listen, seek them. You you're, you're friends with people in the gym. Oh, you like you said, you're in the in the in this cannabis space. You're in different fields. Befriend people like that and say, listen, can I just? I think I want to get in that space. Can I hang out with you for a couple of days? Yeah. You don't have to pay me. I just want to understand what it's like. I say, I tell people, you'd be surprised how many people say, yeah, sure, come on. Yeah. You want to hang out? You want to learn it? You want to make your own brand in yeah. in, in whatever space? I'll help you. Internships, mentorships, you know, internship, I'm, I'm mentorships, big, all these things. I'm a big, uh, a big, you know, I love the idea of like, I tell my daughter all the time, she's 20 and I'm like, if there's a space you want to be in, find somebody that's doing it successfully 
and just don't leave them alone. Just message them and tell them you want to learn, you want to you want to tag along, you want to watch, you want to work for free, right. you want to learn from somebody that's already successful at what you want to do. And maybe it, it and maybe down the road it won't be for you, but at least you have that learning experience and you get to yeah. get out there and try to do something. And and I've always practiced, I always give people an opportunity. I've met, you know, I, I never discard anybody, you know, if I yeah. meet someone and they're interested. And I have a, a matter of fact, one of the interns that was at Quest early on, she's now the CMO of a company called, I think, Real Good, Real Feed, Real Feed Foods. I, they have like frozen pizzas, but yeah. they, they're on the stock exchange now. She's the CMO. Yeah. She's a multimillionaire. Yeah, the she food was an space intern. is huge. Yeah, you and never she, know. And she wanted to hang out with me and learn events. And, uh, you know, I, I took like, hey, yeah, come on, hang out. You want to go work on a Saturday? Yeah, let's go. So I always say, if someone asks you for an opportunity, just, I always say, take a step back and say, okay, yeah, this kid might be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but you know what? They're, they're ambitious. Yeah, they I want to be once, there. I was once that person that doors weren't opening for me. You know, I could tell you a really quick story, if you don't mind. No, please. When I was doing the bodyguard business, and there was a kid, uh, we did a lot of stuff in the music space, and, and this, it, we always go to venues, and you'd see the same people standing outside. Like, they, they want to get pictures, they want to get autographs, and we always had, like, a barrier. And I remember after three events, I saw this same kid, who was a kid, he was maybe 20, 19, and he stopped me one day. I was doing an advance. It was a big Grammy event, and he said, hey, your name's Bruce, right? I said, yeah, we chopped it up for a minute. He said, I really want to meet the guy you're taking care of. He was a CEO of a music company. I said, well, that's probably not going to happen because um, we're going to just get out of the car and go right. He goes, well, you know, I have, I, have this, I have this idea. He goes, no one's giving me a shot. I've been pounding on the doors in Hollywood. And I probably have to move back to Minnesota because I can't make any money here. But I have this, this idea. It's a tech idea. I didn't really care what the idea was. I was kind of humoring him, I think, talking yeah. to him. Later that day, because I went back to the hotel, picked up the client, and we came. And as we're pulling up, and this client was always pretty friendly. He said, I said, you know, it's interesting. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but there's a kid that wants to say hi to you. There was something that sparked in me. Yeah. And as we got out, he said, where is he? I said, right here. And we stopped just for, it might have been a 35-second conversation he had, which I don't even know what they said because I was more paying attention to what's going on. He turned to the assistant and said, hey, get this kid's information. Let's get him an interview. We leave. That's it. Never heard another thing. This is 17 years ago. I'm at the Super Bowl in 2022 at SoFi Stadium with another client in a suite. And have you been to SoFi Stadium? Yeah, you, I was the, there at the, the Super Bowl. Yeah, the glass window so you can mm -hmm. see, you, yep. you know, you have envy of who's ordering food next to you, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, wow, shit, they got better stuff than us. I'm in a suite with a couple NFL owners and a couple big deals, and I see this guy, and I felt like he was looking at me. I swear to God, I had this intuition. A few minutes later, there's a knock at our suite door, and the security guy says, hey, there's a guy to see you. As soon as I saw him, I'm like, wait, that's that kid. He says, hey, you're Bruce, right? I go, yeah, and he literally gave me a hug. He goes, I gotta tell you, he goes, you've changed my life. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> From the time I left, that time I encountered him on the curb, he, he bothered the shit out of the assistant who wouldn't return his calls, and finally one day, I guess she called and said, okay, listen, you can come in and have an interview. We don't have anything here. He went in, because I did tell him at the curb at that time, I said, if you do get a shot, just do it for free. And, I, and, he, and he was, what are you talking about? I said, if you get a shot to do an internship or anywhere at any of these big music companies, just say, listen, I'll work for six months for free. If you're happy with the results of my efforts after that, will you give me a job or just say, hey, thank you for your efforts? He got a shot. Does the internship, I guess this technical idea they had, they embraced in the music and there's something about copyright and stuff, I don't know, whatever. And I, I really never even knew what he did. Fast forward, he started his own production company. He's a multimillionaire and he's there with his wife and, he's, and his wife knew all about me and it's weird because I knew nothing about him. And he said, it was all because you got me that shot that I have now become you know, a multimillionaire. That's and he owned his own box next to ours. Isn't wow. that crazy? Amazing That's story. Wild. So I look back at that and think, well, Full I circle. gave him a shot to at least say hi to somebody, right? So now when I think about people, I meet people, I'm always like, yeah, hey, oh, can I connect you guys here? Here's my phone number. You never know. It's up to you what you do with it, right? Of and it's course. up to you where it goes, but we're all, we all have our own Rolodexes, right? Oh, yeah. it, well, I give you my Rolodex all day long. It's up to you what you do with it, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you, may, you may do nothing with it, but if, when I get an opportunity like you, you and I have connected people. Yeah. Hey, here, meet. Meet Brian, meet Bruce. Is there something you guys could do together? You never know, right? No, you don't. That's what I, I now, it's part of my, my system in my life. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give uh, people an opportunity and I try not to make it about myself in any way. Yeah. If I can connect two people, I'm not the middleman. I don't want to be in the middle of things. And I've never met that own. either. Yeah. It's funny because there's been a couple of times where I've connected people that have done pretty well financially and it'd be like, you should think about getting a cut. It's never been like that because it's always like a little dirty to me. But it is weird. But yeah. people have. I, I, I fortunately, two guys did a deal, and out of the blue, the guy says, "Hey, I need your, I need your info," and he sent me a check for like ten grand. I was like, "What's this for?" He goes, "Believe me." He goes, "I made a lot of money." 
because yeah. I feel I should be paying you something. But that was like a good feeling, right? Oh, yeah. It's well, a it's great like, feeling. It's like our late friend John always used to say, you're the master at connecting the dots. Yeah, and, and listen, all you can do is offer connections, and if people run with it, great. I've, I, 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 one of my highs in life is really seeing other people do well. Me too. If I can even connect you and you, wow, you, wow, that happened, holy shit. I mean, that's an amazing story. Yeah. And it's a full circle thing. And now we're friends, and he's like, you know, wow, yeah. like, you know, wow. Like, and you didn't even know that I that, knew that, nothing chance, that chance encounter changed yeah. his yeah. kid's life. Until but, I saw him again. But his wife knew all about you. She knew the whole story. Matter and of he, fact, was, if, he was grateful for everything. He was so grateful because while he was interning, his wife was already had a job there. She was in the law division, and she wouldn't go on a date with him because he was an intern when he finally got hired they yeah. started dating and now they're married with two kids so it's kind of a cool story right? that's determination <laughs> that's pretty funny that yeah kid, right she goes on a date you're on you're an intern that kid's yeah. got drive right some, some people are just destined to to you know put it out there and win yeah and, and i just live my life that if i could change someone's life it's more uh, i'm gonna be I, i'm a better person for it that's yeah how i feel and you know the Prosperity follows the people that can connect the dots and put people together and have yep. a pure heart while they're doing it, I feel like, you know? So. so if you were to give yourself notes from back when you started 30 years ago, what would be the one takeaway? Um, you, as far as what I would do myself? Yeah. What do you uh, wish you knew, you know? Wish I, yeah, what I do then, right? Yeah. When you were fresh out of the academy. Right. Besides following Warren Buffett's investment tips. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, slow, slow and steady, huh? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I've always had a good work ethic, but I would have been smarter and more strategic on how I built businesses because I was a little, I, in full transparency, I, I let a personal relationship get in the way of my business and it kind of derailed me, you know, caused a divorce and financial collapse. So I, I, I didn't keep my eye on the ball, you know. In, yeah. In full transparency, so I would have learned. Now I, I, I'm much more laser focused. I want to see. I want to. I want to be successful, but I want to be successful for reasons other than just. I always say this: money, money just facilitates things in life. As we know, there are people that are worth silly, silly money that are not happy, depressed, exactly. suicidal, have killed themselves. We're friends with a couple. We're friends with people like that. I'd rather have enough six financial success that I could take care of the people around me. My kids will be okay, but it's not a. It's not a motivator for me like it used to be. Now it's. I want to. It's a tool. It's a tool. It's strictly a tool to, to help yourself, other, help other people and live a lifestyle. But, but we got to remember it's a tool. Yeah, it's all it is. Um, because like you said, we've seen people. Used improperly. Yeah. You're, it can go one way. Sure. Used properly. It can, it can go another and build bridges, you know? So one thing I, I, I mean, yeah, I would, I would be more strategic in that way. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm more giving. You know, I wasn't as giving when I was younger. I'm giving of time, giving of money, giving of energy, right? Giving of knowledge, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I... Uh, Back to your, your Warren Buffett comment, because, you know, obviously being a child actor and, and making money right. early on and, and not having parents that were financially literate, I definitely could have uh, graduated into a different financial background based off of the money I had occurred and the time that it elapsed. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, even to this day, like, you know, explaining to our children and teaching them that, you know, putting money away early wow. and compounding interest is, is the way that Warren Buffett's become Warren Buffett's, you know? He, Obviously, he's he's on another level. Slow but, and steady, but he, he if you do if you look at the history of the chart when he started Berkshire Hathaway, it's just a steady growth. And, that's it. And I remember, I, not to sidetrack too much, I got hit by a car when I was like eight years old by a cab, and there was a lawsuit involved. And I, when I turned eighteen, I think I got seven or eight grand. It was just in a bank, right? Yeah. So I became an, and my dad said, "Hey, I don't." And he wasn't a financial guy. He goes, "I don't know a lot about the stock market, but I've heard you know that's a place you." Can, and he wasn't in it. And I was like, nah, 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 I don't know about that bullshit. I'm going to buy a used Corvette with all that money. And yeah. I think back of, because I look at the date when I could have invested in yeah. things like Berkshire Hathaway. So should have, should have, would have, right? Yeah, small, that, small, small, small investments can be big returns The only returns thing I tell on. people now, kids, like when they, hey, I got an extra money or my kids get a little extra money. Hey, don't, don't, you don't need to buy a new iPhone. You don't need to buy a stereo yeah. or whatever. Just think about how you can put that in, in an investment. So. Yeah, I've done a lot of frivolous spending on things that oh, we that we're paying other people to take out of our houses sometimes. They're just yeah. I just moved recently and uh just the junk in the garage right. and uh, my kids toys and everything yeah. and I'm just like, "Jesus, this is such a cycle of just right. uh wastefulness, you know." Uh yeah. we got about 2 minutes left. Uh, okay. Anything you want to anything you want to share for for people out there that uh you think is worth talking about in the current climate today? Uh, the current current climate is interesting, right? The world's uh, at a teetering point, I think, for a lot of places. Um, 
listen, I try and I try and stay neutral on a lot of things. I mean, obviously, I'm in the service industry, right? But the world is in turmoil, and um, I think it's a, important to uh, support everyone in their endeavors. Yeah, businesses, relationships. Um, but it's becoming a more of a cold world, I think, as we grow, especially with the threat yeah. of a recession and or a deeper recession, right? I think the things that are meant to connect us are separating us a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Political and stuff like that is uh, getting a little tense. I've always tried to walk a fine line with that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. We don't even talk about we, it. Yeah, we don't try to get too involved in that situation because it's a it's a, it's a lose slip. lose situation in the public space. Unfortunately, for it's sure. it's a shame because I feel like these are things that need talked about, but there's not a really healthy space to talk about them anymore. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a, we're definitely in an odd state around that, but we keep it positive and try to, you know, head on a straight and narrow path. Yeah. I think even people sometimes try and peg me or identify me because former Marine, LAPD, oh, you must be one of those guys, right? But I'm a libertarian and I believe in human rights. I believe in a lot of things. Yeah. I believe in really being kind to human, you know, human beings. Man, yeah. Human beings. Treating people like people. That doesn't mean I'm not I'm still a gun toting American, <laughs> but you know, that doesn't put me yeah. in a category, you know? Yeah, I hate that people try to try to squeeze a, a peg into a right, into right. a hole just based Cause, off of cause, certain. Yeah, because as people get to know me, like I spent Christmas the home light at the mission downtown giving out toys, and that's where I did a Thanksgiving. I mean, I have a I have a part of me that's very charitable, and one of my friends find out like, really, I, you don't strike me as that. Well, how, what what do I strike you as? <laughs> yeah, why? <laughs> you know, why? <laughs> what does what is what is what yeah, is what's the criteria to be good for to that? People? You know, yeah. it's a it's a shame that there's these uh, social you know. Yeah. But, but even Brian knows, like we train his kids. I mean, it's a good, it's a good feedback. I mean, a good, it's a good feeling helping kids oh, get sent, back to school. And, send all that black water, yeah. send backpacks. Yeah, it's a great feeling. And that, to me, if we have the means to help other people, why not? Yeah. That's how I look at it. Yeah. And if you don't have the means, that's okay. Don't, you don't have to, but you know. Volunteer your time. Volunteering is free. Being other, kind is free yeah, also. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, yeah. the public speaking. Yeah, so I think it's one of the chapters I've always, you know, as I've grown, um, it's not something I believe. I self doubt has always kept me from doing this, by the way. And I think self doubt keeps a lot of people from doing a lot of things, including businesses and, and relationships. Gonna, and you come off as a very confident person. Yeah, I'm not when it comes <laughs> to more than five people in front of me, right? No, yeah. but so what happened was I started telling my story to people like Pedros or Dan hears or you hear it, and they're like, "Well, how come you're not speaking? I don't have anything to say." Well, dude, you have like seven books right now. Like Pedro said it best one time. We were going to lunch, we worked out, and he said, you know, everyone in the world has a book in them, because it's your story, right? It's yeah. your book. He goes, you have multiple books. He goes, why aren't you doing something with this? And it really made me think, okay. So I realized, while I even, you know, I started, I was, I met Quest, I was pretty already older. Like, I wasn't some kid when I met them. And then I started doubting, oh, well, I'm too old to do speaking. And I, so self-doubt keeps up, but I finally hired a coach, young guy, but he's taught me how to be, you know, camera, looking at the camera, speaking directly, and all the things I need to do. And I'm ready to start, you know, I've wrote, I've texted some people, hey, I'd really like to be on your podcast, or if you have a small event, you know, I'd like to be part of it. And so I got some invitations going on. And to me, it all is a storytelling, right? Yeah. If, I, if my story can motivate you to change something you're doing or change one person's life, that's what it's worth, right? 100%. So that's, that's my mission now. Good. And whether it's business or personal or relationship building. Yeah, there's always something to gain from everybody. Yeah, and I have a couple stories, you know, including the one I just told you about the kid that I met at the, yeah, that yeah. had became an entrepreneur. I mean, that to me, that's you know, I never discard anyone. You know, we had, I had a, a story I told about you know early on at, at Quest. There was a FedEx. We, there, we always got DHL and FedEx drivers. And one day I was at the front counter, and I remember this FedEx driver came in, and he was sweating. It was like 100 degrees out, and and I asked, I asked hey, can we can we get your bottle of water? I got him a bottle of water, and why he was and he wanted to use the restroom. I got him a box of Quest bars. Gave them to him. He's like, oh my God, the whole box? Yeah, so I gave him a whole box of bars. And as some time went on, I saw him again. He said, I gotta tell you something, Bruce. He goes, those bars, I brought them home. His wife's a nurse. She brought some to the hospital and got some of her nurse friends connect, connect, you know, cooked on them. And then he went out and bought more. And then I guess their kids do club soccer, brought them to club soccer. So I, I actually put together this diagram, which I'm gonna use at one of my speeches, that showed the dysphatic driver, all the people he affected. His by wife, you, the doctor. Just by you giving him. By that. giving him one box. The doc, one of the doctors owned the CrossFit gym, so he started buying them. Another person owned a health fitness center. I did this gram where I probably affected 200 people just by giving someone a box of bars. So I always tell people this in business. I don't care if you're in the mortgage business or whatever. Give someone something. If it's oh, a yeah. bottle well, of water. You're like the king of when you meet someone. Yeah. Even I give, if they've yeah. done nothing, you send them a ginormous care pack. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like it's, 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 free, it's currency to me. It's relationship it really currency. Is. No yeah. one's ever going to, I've never had anyone say, oh, 
they forgot me over it. They'll say, hey, that was great, or it wasn't, or they gave it to their friends, but it just shows how many people you could touch. So that's part of my spiel too, like touch people. That's you it. don't have to have a tan, you don't have to have a consumable item if you're in the real, get, I don't care if it's a, a widget, you know? Give them something to make you remembered, you know? Yeah. So. And even John, when he went on his podcast, he always gave you something. Yeah, he always left, John, our, our good friend that had the podcast in Vegas, but he always had like sh some swag bag you leave with, with all yeah. kinds of, you know. Cool stuff in it. It definitely, you gotta, uh, like you said, uh, uh, you never know the positive effect that, that one simple gesture is gonna yeah. have with somebody, so. So that's yeah. what I've learned. So that's part of my spiel. Like, you know, let's be, be generous with what you have to give to people, make impressions that are going to last because those people are going to become that, wow, lifetime customers for a brand is incredible. Yeah. You know, I, I tend to do that in my space as well. Yeah. I like to uh, you give product gift to people. Boxes, didn't you? Yeah, gift boxes or just me handing you something. Now, if somebody comes to me and says, can I, can I come buy your product? It's usually not for sale. We have distribution and ways to go yeah. about that. But but I'm gonna give it to you yeah. and, and love to hear your feedback on it personally. And I definitely want you to, to have this from me. And, and, and I've always practiced, it's funny, cause I, you know, I don't know if you guys know the first rule, rule of Fight Club. Don't, don't talk, about, talk it. about it. And I used to tell people that, cause you know, in, even in this environment, you give someone something to say, okay, I'll post about, I'll do a story. I go, no, 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 it's for you. I'm not asking you to do this. If you want to, that's your prerogative. But I, I tell the, I've always told this, I'm not giving you product because you're an influencer. You want to talk about it, great. If you don't, don't talk about it. Yeah. And it's worked out well because at Quest, we had people that were pretty influential talking about us. Like I remember Will Smith would do a couple stories on us about his wife did. Ronda Rousey, the former UFC mm -hmm. fighter, used to talk about us on social media. That's huge. Just organically. Yeah. I would deliver them product and drop. Remember, Ronda lived in Venice. I would drop the product off at her house and she would talk about it. Now, of course, one time her manager calls me and goes, hey, you know, you tried to squeeze me for a deal. And the crazy thing is it reversed, it kind of backfired on him. She, I said, uh, okay, so she, I guess, talked to him and said, hey, hey I, get played, I get paid plenty of money to do brands that I'm working. I like Quest and I do it because I, I like them. Yeah. So I found over time, I mean, just being generous with product not, and having no expectations is the best relationships. Oh, you give out, what, thousands of dollars? Thousands. But the problem is, you know, you know the brands. Hey, if I send you the sweatshirt, you got to post about it, right? Eh, that's just no. too janky, you know? To no, me, you'll send legendary, you'll send first form. First form, quest, I'll send whatever, be okay. I mean, hey, oh, yeah. and send, if you like it, you like it. Yeah. Talk about it and don't. Yeah. Bring it home no, just for your good. family. I remember at the, the Big Daddy event that you didn't know anybody. Yeah. You got all that first form Yeah, stuff. we had stuff everywhere. And I have big, you know, big clients like Jessica Simpson. Yeah, she's a billionaire. She's not going to be talking about her product. But if it's in her cover and her assistant has sent me pictures, her family sees it, her friends see it, that's, it's, that's priceless. We were on the early on... Uh, one of the Kardashian shows, uh, when I, I guess it's always been the Kardashian, but we were on the set because of the production company. I sent it to the production company. They loved it. And I remember one day it was on the set of the show on their, on their like. Can't their, get better product placement than that. Yeah, and then it was on another, when they went to my, two of the girls, I can't remember, Chloe, or, they took over Miami for like two seasons yeah. on one of the shows. It was in their apartment. I'm like, wow. So they use it. And it was for free. Yeah. You know, where Which other is huge. other company, Coca Cola, would be paying you know hundreds of thousands of dollars to yeah. be in the backdrop of a shit. They get paid huge product dollars for a post. Yeah. yeah, so that's what happened. It just was all organic, and and I, it's just the best way to build a relationship. I feel the same way. Yeah. I like I like organic things. We don't go out of our way to market yeah. uh, or to pay other people to market for us. We just you know go about yeah. it ourselves and and kind of put it in play and put it in people's hands. And yeah. you know, if an article pops up and. Uh, you know, I'm giving it to, to a guy from the LA Times or, or the, yeah. the LA Weekly or the High Times Magazine or something, and sure. we get an article out of it, then amazing, you know? It's, it's I mean, cool it's always to... a great, it's always great when someone does yes. reciprocate, yeah. thank but you. But that wasn't the point. Yeah, you know? it's the better feeling, and then what happens with me is then I feel even, oh shit, now I really want to do something for them, because now they talked about us, you yeah. know? Like send them a gift basket. Yeah, of course. Well, I remember so, every yeah. time we were at John's studio, you made sure Blackwater was Oh, there. we loaded them Everything. up, yeah. And John was the greatest advocate. He'd be like on air, oh yeah, hey, just check out my boy Bruce. You gotta make sure you get product from him. Yeah, we haven't talked about Blackwater much. Um, you wanna break down for the people? What did it? Yeah, I think Black, well, Blackwater, a good friend of ours is the majority shareholder and, 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 and runs the show. And you know, Blackwater was founded by two lovely women out of Canada. And it's got basically fulvic minerals and acids that make it black in color, but there's mm -hmm. flavors and taste. And they started it because their mom had cancer and they were looking for healthy alternatives and they came up with that. And, Fast forward, it's uh, it's doing pretty well. What we're in, Air One, Target, Air One, Target, Ross. It's growing. Yeah, Ross is actually one of our biggest Whole customers. Whole Foods. And for those that don't know, fulvic acid is a is a very uh, is a very good uh, yeah, way of minerals. I mean, what is how far down in the earth they they dig it up? But it's below the it's way down soil lines. It yeah. helps things, well, plants people, and bodies, and and 
uh, biological organisms everything uptake yeah. elements better and a lot of food these days are stripped of that so now you're adding it back into your diet yeah yeah so cooking with it's great and drinking it and there's a lot of medical studies you know i mean every there's medical studies for everything but the cognitive decline it's supposed to help with and even alzheimer's i mean you can't make medical claims obviously but there's studies that have shown it has increased yeah i think even david told me um just about the the effect that it had on his uh, on his trees, on his bonsai yeah, trees. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You know, and that's what really him got him. Yeah, that's what got him into it was that he noticed a difference like immediately. That's funny. We had the same conversation. I have a money tree in my house, and I gave it black water. And I was like, "Wow, it's growing." I it's mean, I felt different. like Mr. Miyagi, but it was all the black water. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, but yeah. It, so the the fulvic the there's fulvic, definitely uh, benefits. Whether it, yeah. whether it cures everything in the world, no, but it, it helps it, nutrient assimilation. Yes. And, and uh, uh, we're all lacking yeah, in proper sure. nutrition these days because of what the American diet and farms have turned yeah. into, you know, this. Uh, so I feel pretty fortunate, you know, to be associated like brands like, you know, Legendary Quest and Blackwater and First Form. I mean, it's all healthier based options in your life. Right. And I say yeah. this, I'm glad I'm not selling canned corn. Right. No, it's not very sexy, but yeah. I've been around brands that are just kind of I think they're changing people's lives. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. That's great. It's a good place to yeah. operate from. Do you have anything uh, public speaking coming up or anything for people to look forward to? Um, a little period. So I'm, tr I'm trying to press my guy to finish the, the website because mm -hmm. I need that because it's kind of hard to go on. You know, it's interesting. You go on a podcast. Hey, where do I find you? On Instagram. You know, I, well, what's which, wrong with that? Which is great, but I want to have a website. I, to, I get it. Yeah, but, but right now it's just Instagram, but I'm finished. I don't have anything. I'm actually reached out. People are scheduling me. I'm doing actually Pedro's... Uh, podcast his fit it's i think it's called fit body boot camp at, in the uh, end of january okay with his ceo that should be pretty cool that'll be fun yeah yeah what's your instagram so people can find oh uh bruce e cardenas at instagram there you or go IG, whatever yeah um so yeah nothing in stone i just started reaching out to people you know dan fleischman's a good friend of ours he's a well-connected guy and you know and sean whalen has offered you know sean whalen lions mm -hmm. not sheep yeah he he's offered to you know for me to come up and do one of his events so cool yeah that'd well, be cool good luck right. with the public speaking uh, yeah i appreciate we that wish you the best i know it's a it can be a little nerve-wracking at times but it's good to get up there and uh you know well one thing i've concluded as you get older you know i don't want to just you know tim grover says it best i don't want to you know winning is great but but living with regret i don't want to have regrets like at least i tried it right yeah if i don't do great or i just do okay great but at least i tried it it's great that you that you are a you know, conscious of that. I, uh, me and Brian were talking about getting somebody, I've read a lot of studies of uh, people in hospice or people at the end of their lives that are, you know, what are the five things that, that they, you know, wish they would have done, wish they would have, you know, yeah. what, what are these, these reoccurring themes in life that when we're faced with the end, we come back to the same emotions and regret is one of the biggest things, regret around career, regret around family just not doing enough or not getting enough out. Right. You know, I definitely feel like um, I'm 41 turning 42 and obviously been working since a young age, but yeah. I feel reinvigorated in life that um, my drive is to just get like this yeah. energy and creative things out of me because you know, nothing's promised. No, nothing's and promised at all. I kind of want to leave everything on the table and, and get as much done. The good news is you have plenty of time. I do. I mean, I, I didn't, I actually met the Quest folks when I was 46. Nice. So I, and, and many people, that's like the end. Most people already figured, okay, I'm going to retire in whatever five years. Yeah. Years, right. So I, I was just getting started and that's what I, Another I always tell people. Another chapter to life. Yeah. yeah. There's no, there's never an end. Cause people ask me, well, I'm too old. You're not too old to do anything. Anything. You can start your own business. People are always at how, how we were just talking about this the other day. How do I make a million dollars? Come up with something and sell it on Amazon. Yeah. You know, find the right people to help you, but come this up is, with something you can produce and sell and that's consumable or not. There's never been a more easy time the in easy, world oh history. You have everything at your you have everything at your fingertips. You have access to anybody through social nowadays, to any business, to any company, to any influencer. Yeah. You know, it's all right there in front of you. And um, you hear the stories. I mean, you got 19 year old kids living in their mom's house or making 10 grand a month selling shit online. It's like, yeah, well, that happened. Oh, yeah. Or even just your coaching services. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything but your time. Yeah. And people, that's the other thing I want to do, coaching. People would always tell me, because of my acting background, that they wanted to, I always wanted to do film. I always wanted to be an actor. And I'm like, you know, it's not too late now. I mean, as you age, you, you, you go through different development stages and you become different characters that you can, yeah. you can have access to. I mean, you know, Morgan Freeman has been acting his whole life, but you know him as the, you know, the, the older of, gentleman and the older voice, yeah. voice of reason or the, yeah. you know. Um, it, it could start at any time. You could go get a role when you're 60, 65, 70, and then, you know, 
be this be this guy. So yeah, yeah. It's a I good just point. saw him in a, it's what's never it too late. Yeah, Olympus Falling. He's I, love, yeah. I, like, I like him in that movie. He's great. He's, He's great, great in everything. everything. Uh, I was I was listening to a scripture the other day, and he actually uh, voice voiceover. Yeah, he did the voiceover. He's, per He's perfect. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was he was reading the scripture, and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. It's cool to hear yeah. hear from uh, Morgan Freeman's voice. You know. So are you are you done acting, or is there something you could you do ever entertain it? Or I do things here and there based off of like who I am and my character previously. Um, I don't... You don't pursue it? I don't pursue it and put myself out there to go on auditions or grind out that business anymore. But I feel like there will probably come a time again when that is yeah. back to being a bigger part of my life. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, the business of things can be a little bit much at times, but the craft in itself, I love, I love being on set. I love the creative space. Um, yeah. It obviously has its dark side. We all know that, you know, Hollywood coming from it has yeah. its dark side. But, but the 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 beautiful side of it is the creation and the camaraderie and and coming sure. together with different people. And I actually got like a really interesting, you know, I didn't go to school much as a child because I was working so much. Um, we did a lot of school on set, but mm. I was around really interesting, you know, very intelligent craft people at all times. So I got a different background in and being around from a young age um, and picking up off of all these, all of these different craftsmen, grips and cameramen yeah. and directors and producers and them treating you like you're an adult because you're working in a shared space, not treating you like a child. So yeah, that was yeah. an interesting, cool. interesting upbringing to, to, you know, to be around very talented people, you know, different, different yeah, yeah. than the normal, the normal childhood. But in some, some regards, I feel like it's a, uh, suited me well in my understanding of human nature and things like that as That's well. Great. Yeah, cool. I like it. Anything you want to add, Brian? Anything coming up? No, I think we covered a majority of it today. All right, folks. Well, yeah. Thanks thank you for, for having, having me. Yeah. Thank thanks you for, for coming. coming on, we Bruce. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. We appreciate your time and uh good luck with the public speaking. Good thank luck you. with legendary and uh you know keep uh bridging those gaps. I mean you're changing lives and you need to you know, we don't know that these little things are that mean the world to everybody. But that story about the uh, the young kid that yeah. you gave the opportunity to is that's what life's all about, yeah, really. For sure. And then discover you know? it 17 years. Right. Later. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. That's a cool moment. And now he wants to hang out with me. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad. And, yeah, maybe, right. and maybe it comes full circle. Yeah. You know? Maybe he has a platform now. Right. For sure. To to return the favor. And that's and, what he said. He, you. he did say that. He goes, what can I do to help you now? Like, I, I know yeah. a lot of people now. That's it. So. You know, you're on this public speaking uh, yeah. journey, and maybe he can be influential in your life now. And there's a lot of channels there I found. Obviously, the people we know, but then there's yeah. just so many more. Oh, it's, it's are endless. And it's the insane. Corporate events. And, yeah. The good part about technology and social is that there's all of these niche markets now that people couldn't really, you know, you right. used to have to dive so deep into something to actually be involved in. And there's so many people that, you know, every day, I find some really successful person in some niche field that I didn't even know existed and that they have this cult following and it, it's a really yeah. interesting thing. It just invigorates me because I know anything's possible these yeah, days. For sure. The kids should definitely out there be hella motivated because we're in we're in a really great space. I mean you've seen the arc of the whole oh my God. technological yeah. uh, takeover. So it's it's a it really is the best time to be alive, even with the, you know, the, the nervousness that we feel in public culture. It really is. Yeah. So. Well, well, thanks again. Thank of you. Of course. Yeah. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. See you guys on the next episode.